I'd like to welcome my guest, 14-year-old Sam Molig and his mother, Kathy Molig. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Sam, uh, you were born a girl. You were adopted at age uh, two months old. Uh, can you tell us about when you first felt like you were a boy? Um, around three or four uh, in preschool. And, and what made you, what made you, you were in preschool with other kids and did you just feel different? What made you feel like, hey, I'm different here? Um, it was more when we would line up to leave class at the end of the day, they would say, boys, go get your buckets. And I would run with them and they'd say, Sam, come back, you're a girl. And my response was, no, I'm not. And then I'd get my bucket and walk out with the boys. So you had these feelings early on. How did you cope with them from that age up until your transition? Um, it was, it was pretty easy to cope with. More, my parents let me express and let me dress the way I wanted. And I got my hair cut the way I wanted to. So it wasn't hard to fight with. So it was relatively easy. Because of their support. How about with other kids? How did your gender identity, what you were dealing with, how did that, uh, how did that impact how you dealt with other kids? Um, all my friends always thought I was a tomboy. But if someone said, oh, you two are really nice. Like, is this your brother? And they'd be like, oh no, Sam's a girl. And people would be like, really? So it was. Wasn't, wasn't too bad, it sounds like? No. Not too bad, all right. Well, Kathy, um, what was it like for you as a mother when Sam first started saying, hey, I'm a boy? Well, Sam never really said to adults he was a boy. He would tell his peers at age three and four and on up. We always just allowed Sam to be whoever he was. Um, and we always called him Sam, even though that wasn't his birth name. It wasn't until puberty hit that we realized that we had a larger issue than what we thought we did. You, uh, Sam, you were the first patient at Reedy's uh, Children's Gender Management Clinic. Um, but let me ask your mom this, how did you and Sam decide it was time to start the transition process? So around age nine, Sam started to exhibit severe anxiety and depression. And we sought medical help with therapists and psychiatrists. And it was actually the psychiatrist who about age 11, as we were discussing that I felt Sam had some kind of gender issues, not knowing what that meant, who led me into the world of transgender. I was able to do research. The therapist was able to work with him. And once we had a grounding of feeling like we knew what we were dealing with, then we went to the medical community. And Sam, how does it feel now that you're a boy? How do you feel different? Or do you feel different? Um, I definitely feel different. It's easier to wake up in the morning and be proud of who I am, whereas back when I was depressed and anxious and I just thought, why am I awake? But oh. now I can be like, okay, let's start the day and I'm a boy, so. And it feels good then. Oh yeah. All right. Um, what does, uh, Kathy, what does gender transition involve? You started at age 11, I believe, Sam. So what, what does that involve exactly? So there's the social transition, which can happen at any age, which is simply allowing a child to express themselves in the gender that they identify, clothing, um, the way that they, their pronouns, the name that they use. And then at a certain point, it's important that they seek medical professionals to do things like halt the puberty that is naturally occurring in their body with hormone blockers. And then the next phase is introducing the hormones so that they go through the puberty in which they identify. So mm -hmm. there's many different steps for our youth to take over the course of many years. So you were 11, uh, Sam, when you started this, now you're 14. Will you continue with the physical transition? Uh, yes, I actually have top surgery in 24 days. In 24 days, are you nervous? No, I'm more excited. Okay, that's good to know. Um, Kathy, you started a support group for families of transgender kids in this process. What advice do you have for those families? Um, I think that it's important for families to understand it's a journey, and it's a journey for the entire family. This isn't just something that our children go through, we all go through. You know, many times you're gonna have families who feel like they can't tell other people outside of their immediate family, their friends, their coworkers, things like that, or how do I go about telling them? How do I fight with the insurance to get what my child needs? How do I fight with the medical community, educationally at school? There's just, there's a lot of aspects to it that our families need support for. All right, well, we certainly appreciate you both coming on and talking with us about this. Uh, Kathy Molig and Sam, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.